Ocean monuments, also known as Guardian Temples, are one of the largest structures in Minecraft, but because of the dangerous guardians, raiding them can be difficult. So in this video, I'll show you how to find and raid an ocean monument starting right now. So first, how do you actually find an ocean monument? There's three different ways. The first one is to literally just boat around the ocean hoping to find one underneath you, as they are pretty common and that's a decently good way of finding them. The second way is with Ocean Explorer maps. If you have a Cartographer Villager and you trade with it a bit, a trade you'll unlock is a certain amount of emeralds plus a compass for an Ocean Explorer map. Now this item is rather cool because when you're looking at it, it will lead you to an ocean monument. You can see on the map there it shows us where it is. We turn on our F3 menu, we can see where north is, and north in the map is also north on our F3 screen, meaning because this is north, we want to go just about west to find that ocean monument. And putting the map in your offhand is probably a good idea considering the fact that it is not very easy to see it when it's in the full view and you can't really walk when it's there. And so putting it in your offhand, it's a better view to go exploring. You'll know you're starting to get close to one when the map starts to fill in with color and you're exploring the chunks that are making up that map. And you can see on the map there, we're getting quite close to the ocean monument and right in front of us, there it is. So this is another way of finding them. And the third way is to go to Chunk Base and simply locate them on there easily, but it is sort of an authentic Minecraft experience to find it through the map. But don't just go over to the Ocean Monument with nothing on you but a map, or you will be killed very quickly by the Dangerous Guardians. So what you want to bring is you need Water Breathing Potions, Night Vision Potions are super useful, you also want a bunch of building blocks that are not natural to the monument, you want some TNT, at least three, three blocks of redstone, axolotls can be helpful, a Riptide Trident is super useful, as well as a Loyalty Impaling Trident, but you don't need that. Of course, you want a good quality sword, and some emergency doors with oxygen, and not to forget a milk bucket, although again, you don't necessarily need that. You also want some good quality armor with Respiration 3 and Aqua Affinity on the helmet, and Depth Strider 3 on the boots, but technically all you really need to raid an ocean monument is iron armor, a couple water breathing potions, and a sword, but each one of these items will make it significant significantly easier. So once you've made your way over to the ocean monument, now fully stocked with supplies, you want to get near to the center of the ocean monument right here, and make sure your TNT redstone and building blocks are on your hotbar. And the second you're here, the guardians are going to start attacking you. But if you go around a pillar like this, it'll interrupt their beams, making them not be able to attack you no matter how long they try. You might have noticed there I was just given the mining fatigue effect. And because of that, I won't be able to mine any blocks. So we're going to place a piece of TNT in the center here, trying to avoid these guardian beams. Then we'll surround it in dirt on every single side. And that'll make it so that when we explode it, it is not touching air. And then because of that, it'll actually destroy blocks. Now that's exploded, we can go in here and kill the Elder Guardian. Also at this point you certainly want to drink your potion of water breathing. Now once you're inside of here, simply go up to the Guardian and hit it. But once you've hit it, go and hide behind the pillar to interrupt its beam. Then go towards it again, hit it, and just interrupt its beam again. These pillars are very useful for that. And just be aware that of course without any Aqua Affinity or Depth Strider, it is a lot slower to be in the water. So you need to be a lot more careful. Also because of the Guardian's large spikes, it will occasionally hurt you when you're hitting it, so it's good to be aware of that. You can see here I've just killed the Elder Guardian here, and it dropped some cooked fish because I killed it with a flame sword, and it also dropped a wet sponge. That's actually really cool because there's not many sponges in Minecraft to find, and getting an extra one from each Elder Guardian is quite useful. Now before we go into the rest of the Guardian Temple here, we want to kill the two other Elder Guardians, which can be found in other parts of the Guardian Temple. Just be aware when exploring around here, try and stay around some blocks like this, so you can avoid those Guardian Beams effectively. Alright, you want to go to the end of both of these corridors right here, and do the same thing, place down some dirt around here, place down your TNT, place down the redstone on top of it, then swim away here so it does not hurt you when it explodes. And when that explodes, we can go in here and kill that Elder Guardian. Again, be aware of its beam. You can place down some dirt in a pillar like this to have an easy little blocker of its beam like that. And you can even surround yourself and make all kinds of beams around here. Just be aware it's super important to cut off their beam access to you because not doing that will result in a large 
in sort of a death spiral of there being more and more beams on you and getting killed rather quickly, especially considering that the Elder Guardian's beam is quite deadly. Also, it's always a super good idea to remember to eat as soon as you're hungry, especially when you're fighting bosses like this, because the amount of damage they give you is really high. And so if you have a high saturation level from eating a lot and you can regenerate your health quickly, that can totally save your life in the long run. All right, there is now the third Elder Guardian. It's on the other side here of the temple in this other wing. So we're going to do the same thing here, place down our dirt kind of in the middle here of the bit of this pyramid that goes down. So we're going to place this like this, place down our TNT, place down our redstone, and that will explode, giving us access to this side. And we can fly in here and kill this Elder Guardian, and this is the final Elder Guardian in the temple. But again, be aware that that beam can kill you very much, like in full diamond armor there, it took off about four hearts of health. Now, placing down these dirt pillars on either side of you, especially in this part of the Guardian Temple, can be a very good way of saving your life because then there's only a very small angle they can actually hit you from. And you can even place these all around the place just to give yourself some little safe areas from the Guardian Beams. It's always a good idea to remember that you can, of course, build in Minecraft and the bosses cannot. And so being able to build around here will totally give you much more protection than you could normally have. And you can technically even place blocks around here to constrict the movement of the Elder Guardian there. Well, that doesn't always work that well, but if you do that, then it can give you some easier access to kill it before it runs away. And now we've got the last Elder Guardian. But of course, that's not the end of really the boss fight or of defeating this Guardian Temple because the standard Guardians still have a very deadly beam and there is now treasure to rescue. But because all the Elder Guardians are dead, we'll no longer have the mining fatigue effect once this runs out. But if you brought a bucket of milk, you can simply drink that now. And the mining of fatigue effect is now gone, as well as your water breathing effect. So you want to drink this potion of water breathing to help that not go away. Now we want to go find the treasure, but where can we find that in the Guardian Temple? So the first thing you want to do is exit the temple and go into the front room of it right here. This is the way we'll find the gold treasure. But again, it's good to be aware of all the guardians in here as they can be super deadly. Something you can do as well is you can block up the entrance of the guardian temple like this. What that'll do is that'll make it so that no more guardians can swim inside. Of course, they can spawn inside of here, but there's a lot more spawning area outside the temple than there is inside of it. So that could help you a little bit in the short term. And once you're in this large open room here in the temple, and there's only one of these, you want to get to a safe area with not many guardians near you, like maybe over here and you want to grab out your pickaxe and mine towards the center of this. But of course, be aware that there is so many of these guardians around here. Something you could do is place dirt blocks below it like this and give yourself a little area here, then mine this block above it, and you can mine the treasure here. And the treasure consists of eight gold blocks, which is good treasure. It's certainly not the best it could be. It's too bad it isn't like, let's say, a three by three of gold blocks, which would be like 27 gold blocks. But still, it's nice to have this extra gold, especially if you're doing this before you have a gold farm. And also when this structure was originally added into the game, eight gold blocks were a bit harder to get than they are now, especially with nether gold ore and things like that. Still good to grab nonetheless. Now you want to go into the rest of the temple, but it's a bit of a maze, and you don't want to get lost or forget where you've already been. So what I would suggest is once you've explored an area that you know has nothing in it, like let's say we know there's nothing really in this area here, except for the sponge I just found, which is kind of ironic, but um, let's just say there was nothing I found here. We could block it up a little bit, and then we could know there's nothing past here, but we did just find the sponge. So that we've found the sponge, we can break it. Actually, something you could do if you wanted is bring a hoe with you, because a hoe is the fastest material to break sponge, but it is pretty easy just to break by hand as well. What we just found here is a sponge room. That's the second treasure in the temple. There's really only two treasures, which is the sponges and the gold, and sponges are certainly one of the most useful items in all of Minecraft. I would say probably on par with a tool or maybe a shear or something like that. So we'll mine out all of this. There should be just about 30 of these. There might be a little bit less or a little bit more though, depending on the sponge room. And now that we've grabbed all these, we can kind of see what the next intersection is, which is right here. Now we can block this up knowing not to go in there again. In fact, this whole area down here can be blocked up since there's nothing really to do there. That's the best way not to get lost here is just to block up any area you know you've already been to. 
and also generally these sponge rooms tend to be on the highest part of the temple, so it's good to try and go higher and higher in the temple here. And guardian temples can have anything from no sponge rooms, unfortunately, all the way up to four sponge rooms, or maybe even more, I'm not sure. I've actually found four sponge rooms in some temples before, but it is quite rare. And as you are in the guardian temple here, you can use your tridents to kill the guardians here. It's super useful for that. And also the riptide trident can be great for navigating around in here. I've noticed in Java Edition there's some weird bugs around not being able to move very well in certain parts of this. It seems like certain blocks aren't waterlogged correctly, but either way, no matter what version you're in, it can be hard to navigate in here, and having the trident can be super useful for that. The ranged weapon trident can be great too, to counteract the ranged weapon of these guardians. If you have a conduit, you can place that down in the guardian temple, giving you the conduit power, which will make it a lot easier to kill these guardians, because it will give you infinite water breathing and better viewing under here as well as a lot of other things. If you want to know more about conduits, I have a conduit guide, and once it's posted, there will be a link on the screen right now on an iCard, and you can navigate to that video and learn more about those. And of course, generally to get a conduit, you would need to raid an ocean monument anyway, because of the fact that you need prismarine for it. Anyway, that's how you find and raid the ocean monument. Goodbye, and goodbye, guardians.